Evolution Sales, Sailing Evolved. Greg Fisher is brought to you by Evolution Sales, Sailing Evolved. Visit evolutionsales.us for more information. VX1, the fastest growing one design class in North America. Visit thesailinginc.com for more information. J-Boats. Sailing Inc. is the broadest reaching J-Boat dealer in North America. Check out thesailinginc.com for more information. We hope you enjoyed today's interview with Greg Fisher. Interview, today's interview with Greg Fisher. live here. Greg, can you hear us okay? I can hear you fine, Bill. Awesome. Well, welcome to Sailing Inc., uh, the, the quarantine edition of uh, the live broadcast. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to, to kind of come, come aboard and, and chat with us for a little bit. It's, you know, we, we don't get to get to the Yacht Club or down to the docks right now, so we might as well share a little while we can uh, this way. Um, but definitely appreciate you you coming on board. Um, if uh, quick introduction, I'm sure everybody knows who who, uh, who Greg Fisher is. Uh, he's a longtime one design sailor, sailmaker, sailing coach, uh, drinking buddy. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, welcome, Greg. Um, can you just uh, kind of give us a you know how's how are things going in in your world right now? Are you doing a little homeschooling and and I, I know you're still recovering, you know, with a after a little bit of a injury with your foot. What's going on? Well, thanks, Bill. First, thanks for doing these things. I think this is incredibly helpful to everybody who's kind of cooped up, like uh, like myself, and um, you know, still want to enjoy the sport, still want to see their buddies, still want to learn some stuff and uh, and share. You know, so what a great idea. And um, yeah, we're we're like everybody, kind of hanging in there doing the best we can and um i've kind of been on lockdown i guess you might say for a few months here with this little foot thing and now that my daughter and i are, are locked down together i think she's cured on the time with her old man for sure but we've had some fun but um no we're getting by and um again i really appreciate you inviting me to to do this with you very cool very cool well thanks for coming along um so can you know, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, we, we've all kind of sailed against each other in the small one designs for years and years. And I was looking back through your, your timeline a little bit on LinkedIn and, and, and Facebook just to kind of see, you know, how the whole timeline played out. And has it really been 20 years since you've moved down here and, and started working for the college? No, actually, it was um, 2010. Um, I left North Sales then and uh, started with the College of Charleston as a sailing director in 2010 and then left in 2018 to take the job with U.S. Sailing as the COO of the Olympic team. So um, it seems like yesterday um, we are very fortunate to be here in Charleston and we love it, love the people, love the place. I'm looking outside, it's sunny, it's almost uh, 75 degrees. It just doesn't get a whole lot better. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I did my math wrong. It's 2020 and you moved down here in 10. So it's been 10 years. So uh, I was just doing my math wrong. But yeah, you're right. It is a beautiful day outside. Uh, I think this afternoon we may have to we may have to move the desk out to the patio back there. But uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, 
I think you wanted to kind of touch base today on, on kind of the team culture and, 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 uh, and, and kind of how kids, kids or young adults can move along after coming up through the ranks of Opti and then laser and then high school sailing, college sailing, then what, how do you stay involved? And, and at what level do you, you know, do, do they stay involved and for how long, you know, I've got, you know, a 20 year old son who's, who's, you know, about to graduate from the college and, and, you know, obviously he wants to go sailing. Uh, but you know, sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you got to go get the real jobs. You can make the money and own the boat. So I, th I think it's, it's, I, I, I saw a presentation with you at, um, at the Sarah meeting or the Sarah uh, convention here a couple months ago, and it really got, a, got everybody thinking a little bit. So, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think these are different times when I was young and, um, you know, went through college. And when I was done with college, I was fortunate to, to love the sport of sailing and I wanted to continue on with it, you know, and uh, there weren't too many options in those days, frankly. And um, like many my age that wanted to stay involved, I became a sailmaker and I was lucky to get engaged with um some people that really took me under their wing. Bill Shore was my first job in Newport, Rhode Island, and um, a great teacher. And um, I realized then that's that was going to be my career. Um, <clears throat> and I think that was what gave me the opportunity to do a lot of sailing. You know, coming out of college, of course, we didn't have a lot of financial resources to to, to work with, you know, and it's the same today. And maybe in some ways today, I think it's even trickier. So it's hard and, and the boats are more expensive. Campaigning is more expensive. You know, the level of ante to get into a really strong program is more these days as well, which is great because that means the level of competition and level of commitment is, is even higher, but it, but it is more involved and it is a little more expensive to do that. Um, so I think, you know, the things that, classes are doing these days like the etchels with their youth teams i think they have three boats that they share uh, um, the lightning class does the boat grant program which is super successful and i'm excited to be on that committee and and see that growing and there are a number of classes that are um you know working on those kind of programs for for young sailors that that want to compete but just don't have the dough to do it you know, they give, they provide a boat, they provide some financing to go to the events. And I think that's really strong. You know, unfortunately, there aren't enough for everybody. And I think we could have a whole discussion about college sailing. And I'm a huge fan of college sailing. I think it, it not only teaches sailors to be great sailors, you know, the, the, the racing that goes on is, is spectacular. It teaches them to be great teammates. It, teaches them um, time management. It teaches them uh, Did you lock up there, Greg? Uh, 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 well, we're having a little technical difficulty. I'm not sure if he can hear you. Greg, can you hear yeah. us okay? <laughs> I'm going to put, and, and, uh, well, it sounds like uh, we're having a little bit of a uh, technical difficulty with Greg. So I'm going to stand by a little bit. Greg, are you back now? Can you hear us okay now? Oh, bummer. Well, I'm going to scroll through a few pictures here that he sent us. Um, uh, this is always a fun one here. It's, I think it's him uh, hanging out at the, uh, I think we've lost him completely now. Hopefully he logs back in. Um, but uh, if not, we'll, you know, we'll talk through it a little bit and, and see how it, how it goes. I think this is a picture of Greg at the college nationals two years ago. He was out on the coach boat and celebrating a little bit because I think his team was just about to win the, the college nationals. Uh, um Oh, he obviously wanted to celebrate his his wife winning the VX1 North Americans this year with with Mike Marshall. That's a great shot of them up in Newport. Um, Greg, let me know when you get back in. Um, hang on, he's texting me. 
So let's see what he let's see what he says here. Um, let's see what he, he's gonna he's gonna try and log back in. He says uh, things shut down on the other side. So, um, but anyway, you know, Greg kind of you know he he reiter reiterated the fact that um, that his you know he he really wants to push people to to continue on in sailing as much as. As, as much as they can and and he's really got a great great program and an initiative to kind of keep that going and you know i think he was talking about oh hold on i think he's coming back now stand by greg let me pull you back in are you there now <laughs> can you hear us okay <laughs> it's all right I can hear you fine am i okay uh yeah i think i think everybody can hear you um so so uh, while you were gone there, I, I, I showed a couple of little celebration pictures here. Uh, this one here of your wife winning the uh, VX1 North Americans with Mike Marshall this year. It was, it, oh, yeah. it was fun, fun to watch them sail so well. Hopefully uh, we can get our boat going as well as they are. But yeah. um, and the other picture that I stuck up there real fast was was this one. And I believe this is just before you guys won the won the. Uh, college nationals right you, you were sitting on the coach boat celebrating a little bit it could be we i think it might have been right during like a nationals practice where everybody's having a great time and really focused on it and we often had days like that it was a lot of fun yeah i, I actually i get to spend a lot of time down at, at the docks at the college and i get to talk to a lot of the a lot of the young sailors that are down there and, and they all come off the water smiling every day and it seems to me that you guys have that mentality of if it's if you guys aren't out there having fun anymore it's time to bring it in because it's just it, you know th there's a reason we're doing this and it's it, and it's not necessarily to go out there and just grind and grind and grind and we, we want to keep it as fun as possible yeah yeah well so, you know kind of can i mention can i talk about that a little bit bill but, but before, can i go back and just kind of finish what i was trying to say before i i got cut off um yep with the with the pro sailing you know, and I think I was one of those initially that kind of thought pro sailing wasn't healthy for the sport. And um, and I'm not sure why I had that conclusion or made that that distinction, I guess. But but then I went down and was able to do some coaching at some J70 events and had a great time. Loved it. Loved the people there. Obviously loved the coaching. But I saw a lot of college sailors there who wouldn't necessarily have had the opportunity to do a lot of sailing um they're racing and so i think what college salem does is give these sailors that are super talented sailors an opportunity staying with continue on and and do their thing so i think it's a healthy thing yeah so I, really I'm, you know i would love to see everybody have the opportunity to do their own racing i think that's great and uh, there are still people that get involved with, um, you know, sail making or yacht designing or, or boat building or whatever. I think that's still a great part of it. But there's a lot of going back to your question. I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah. Um, but the, but you're right. What you said, too, about the gang having fun down at the dock and college sailors enjoying themselves. You know, that's the name of the game in anything we do no matter what level, you know, we got to make sure we're having a great time. And, um, you know, I, I had some time to work with the Olympic program for just over a year. And uh, I learned a lot, um, you know, it was challenging in a lot of ways, but the part that I really enjoyed the most was the time with the coaches and the sailors. And my job only gave me a couple opportunities to do that. But what I realized is though, they are at a level of commitment and focus like you know you rarely see they are having a great time as they do it and they work super hard they're obviously super talented and um, i have incredible confidence we're going to see great things out of this team in the future it's developing the leadership is developing the focus is developing but but my point is they have a great time that shot you have up there is yep. uh, I got to go to the Pan Am games as a coach with Landro Spina and Malcolm Page. And um, I, I had a great time um, learning from them. I had a super time with the athletes 
and, you know, spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with them, um, helping where I can, you know, supporting where I could and just watching them do their thing and love it as they do it. But this shot here is kind of cool because this is after the medal race where um, Riley and Anna won the gold medal in the, in the games. This last race is blowing over 20, 25. And their goal is just to keep that boat upright. And they're sailing in and uh, won the race. You know, they didn't win the race, but they did exactly what they needed to do and, uh, and won the event. It was really cool. But it was fun there. We had the, the team got seven out of 10 medals. And, um, but most important, going back to what you're saying, they had a great time doing it. Focused the whole time, 200% all the time, um, but enjoying it. You can see by the picture, this is after I think um, the first day of medal races after five medals were won and there were two more after that. And it was um, it was just fun to be with this gang. They were yeah. incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through the pictures a little bit. I know they're probably a little bit out of order, but it looks to me like everybody down there is having an absolute blast the whole time. And, you know, it, it's yeah. great that we can, you know, we can send our athletes you know, to events like that and, and, and show off their skills and, and win some of these events and, and get ready for the Olympics. So it's, yeah. it, it's pretty cool. And we appreciate all the efforts from, you know, all the coaches and staff. And, you know, it sounds to me like there's a lot that goes into it a lot further yeah. than, than what we're yeah. the average yeah. team. So, you know, just talking about coaching, Bill, you know, in this picture here with our little mascot buddy in the middle, this is a number of the team, but the two coaches, and it's small to see, but Malcolm is there, Leandro is there, and, um, you know, these are two incredibly talented coaches and sailors in their own rights, obviously. You know, Malcolm's got two gold medals, five world championships. Leandro's result list goes down the length of his arm. But, you know, watching them coach is it's all about, you know, the sailors and it's all about making sure they're giving them the information they need in such a way that it's supporting them and making sure they have a great time. You know, and, and I learned a lot from that. It's not all about developing a, um, you know, we're going to win at all costs. It's we're going to have a great time as we do this and we're going to give it 200 percent. Right. And that's yeah. the way it works. Absolutely. Can you give us a, a, a quickie? Uh, who, who is this group from left to right? So that's um, Farrah Hall. That's Leandro. Will Sear. Farrah was a windsurfer. Uh, Will is the um, foiling kite. Um, that's Meredith Bro, the Olympic director. Um, that's okay. Riley, the NACRA. That's Connor Bluen, the yeah. assistant coach at the College of Charleston, the Sunfish guy. I'm a little nervous how he's looking at the mascot there. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but, that's, but that's Connor. Great coach, great guy. Um, and that's Hannah that does the uh, did the snipe. And that's Malcolm next to Charlotte Rose and yours truly on the far right. Very nice. So it's a great Very group. Nice. And, and that's not all the team, but um, that's a good bunch of it. Right. We had fun. Self back onto this screen here. I may end up on the other side now, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, well, cool. That's, yeah. Is there any, you know, what else did you get out of that, that trip? I mean, um, you obviously, it looked like they had, they all had a great time and there was a lot of success down there, but uh you know, what, yeah. what do you think the athletes brought back to, to get them ready for the Olympics and, and beyond? Well, I think it gave them a big shot of confidence because they all sailed really well. No question about it. Um, they had good speed, which obviously is a big part of it. And, um, and I think, you know, what was interesting there, because they had limited resources, they only allowed three coaches for the um, – you know, the 10 classes. And, um, and we broke that up. Landro organized what we did with the different teams each day. Um, you know, and some of us were more focused on certain areas like myself with the lightning and the snipe and the sunfish, for example, and Malcolm did the 49er and the FX more. Um, but, but it was, um, interesting 
that we really were focused on giving them what they needed. You know, we had debriefs with them every night and that was important. Um, but it was all kind of helping maintain the tempo that each team needed. You know, you, you could easily overwhelm them. So I learned watching these guys at work, how they were very careful about making sure they, um, um, you know, made sure that they were, were enjoying themselves and, and at a state where they could really, uh, you know, handle the next day of sailing. Yeah. It looks like somebody just chimed in from uh, possibly upstairs. Uh, can you see that across the bottom of the screen? Yeah, yeah. Like, how are the athletes doing now? You know, I think everybody's disappointed that this was the move that had to be made. Um, but obviously, as we all know, unfortunately, that was the right decision, you know, and everybody's disappointed. I've talked to a couple of the coaches. I haven't talked to the athletes, but obviously they shared that um, in some way, some ways they say, I think everybody saw the posting and the interview with, with Steph and Maggie where they said, you know what, we got another year here to really nail this thing. And, um, and it's, you know, it's important. I think it's important they have that attitude and they do. And because they love it, they're going to balance it and, um, and make sure that they are having a great time as they go through this whole thing. But, I, but I think yeah. everybody has a perspective and understands that this was just what we had to do. Absolutely. So what happens there? Do, do all classes basically just hold on to whatever athlete won the trials or do we have another trials or does it, is it class by class? What's going no, I on think once, once the trials are complete and, and most of them are for sure, everybody is um, set and, um, and the coaches will focus on that sailor. And then this, and I'm speaking a little bit out of school and obviously I haven't been involved for a number of months now, but this is where Leandro steps in. Leandro right. is the ODP coach, the Olympic development program, not just a coach, he's a director. And for those that you don't know, uh, Leandro, or you haven't had the opportunity to spend much time with him, he is exceptionally talented. He uh, was the Olympic director, Olympic development coach of all Olympics, you know, gymnastics, skiing, everything in 2018. And that's pretty spectacular. Um, right. But this is where he steps in and makes sure the team members that didn't make it are still engaged and enthused to move forward for 2024. And, um, and he's on it. He's, yeah. he's got it all figured out. It's a little job security for him too. Keep it well, going. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he loves that. And he, he just, he's the man when it comes to keeping the team together like that. That's awesome. Um, real quick. I just want to, you know, I can see the people are, are, are chiming in and asking a few questions here and, and we're just going to try and answer them as they come in. Um, Todd Wake, I do have, I will pop you up here in just a second. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the VX one. So get ready, Greg, <laughs> but, um, but he does have a question, but I, I don't want to get off this group, this group just yet. Um, you know, I want to make sure that you've, you've kind of given us all the information you think we yeah. need to keep, keep things going here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can we talk a little bit about a team? Absolutely. Because, um, I love my time at the college of Charleston. Um, for a number of reasons, but one was to be a part of the team culture we had, you know, we had great coaches. Um, I was lucky to, to be with Ward Cromwell as our head coach. Mitch Hall was our assistant coach who I was fortunate to hire. Obviously Ned Goss, Chuck Coyer, Ned's our doc master and, and is full on 24 um, seven. Chuck had a huge effect on our offshore program and now Connor Bluens there. And these guys really thrive on putting together a, uh, a, a very strong team spirit. And I think what drives that is that everybody needs to know they're a part of the team. You know, I think everybody appreciates there are those sailors that are going to go win, literally win the national championship for us. And then there are those sailors that help us with the marketing, help us with the organization, help us run the races and help keep the, 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 our top competitors, if you will, honest and that they race against them every day at practice. And, and everybody knows that they're contributing to that and they have, you know, um, you know, an effect on the performance. And, um, 
And it's interesting. I think a part of this too, it comes um, not only a respect for each other, but comes some responsibility. And everybody knows and feels that they're a part of this strong team and they need to be responsible and recognize everything that they do reflects on the team. We always would say, we're unfortunately, but it's kind of cool. We're living in a bubble and people are kind of watching you guys because of what you've been fortunate and worked so hard to achieve. And when you achieve that, you know, it comes with some responsibility to show what it's like to be a strong sportsman, sportswoman, and what it takes to be a strong team player. And they did it, man. They nailed yeah. it every day. And it was so much fun to be around those coaches and watch them do their thing. And it was so fun to be around the sailors and watch them enjoy it every single day. You know, and, and, and that was an important part. This sounds kind of trite, but when, when we have practice, we would literally – watch the expressions on the team's faces, we would listen to what they say. You know, if the gang would come by and say, hey, hey, how many, uh, how many starts are we going to do? Or somebody would come by and say, uh, how much longer are we, you know, if we got the sense, we would talk about it and say over the radios, I had three come by, I had two. We would just, if, if for some reason it wasn't resonating and they weren't having fun or weren't enjoying the whole process, it was time to go in. And yeah. I, I, hope, I hope the coaches would agree with me on that too, but I think everybody recognized the value of making sure that everybody is on the same page and, and having a great time. Absolutely. And they really, they really are a bunch of good kids. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we're lucky enough to, to be able to hang out with them a little bit because, because of Jordan. So, it, it, you know, I've met so many of these good kids and their parents and the coaches. I mean, the support within that whole group is just, just amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned awesome. Jordan just real quick. I want to do a little plug for the offshore team and, and I'm not a big boat sailor though. You know, I've, I've um, been on one every once in a while and back in the <laughs> old days I did a little bit, but it was interesting when Chuck Hoyer came to town and when we had a group of sailors who were big boat sailors come and, you know, they didn't make the dinghy team, but they were obviously talented sailors they started the offshore team. And uh, all it did is just give a group another opportunity to enjoy the sport and represent the College of Charleston and, and be a part of this strong team culture. And it was really cool. I think we went from 35 kids on the team to 70 in a matter of a couple, three years. Yeah. I'm not sure the administration was super fired up about that, <laughs> but, but it was a really talented group. And um, yeah, and the captains, I, I just want to say the captains are key in this. And I think this is an important part of developing a team is that the captains get elected by the team. The coaches really don't have any involvement with that other than taking the votes, you know, and then they choose their team coaches and they listen to them and they lead them. Yeah. Sorry if I got off on a tangent there, but I, I, I just, I, you know, kind of love being a part of a team that is um, strong and, and growing. Yeah. And this picture here, it, this, these are alumni, right? They get to go back and, and play a little bit after the, after they're yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is an especially, um, uh, you know, a special picture to me because my wife, Joanne's in the picture. And um, this is when, she and Emmy and Jackson and Zeke driving the boat won the J22 Worlds in 2018. And yeah, you're right. Emmy, Jackson and Zeke just recently graduated from the college. So there's Joanne sailing with them. Uh, Zeke um, took my position at North Sales in Annapolis. He sailed the boat that we sailed when we were fortunate enough to win the Worlds and went and got the job done. And, um, and it was just cool. I mean, um, and I'm happy that they did that. I'm, I'm really happy that they invited Joanne to come sail with them and she had a great time and I'm excited that she continues to sail. You know, it, I, I don't have the opportunity quite as much because of the jobs that I've had, but that's fine. I, I had my time, but I'm glad she's still able to do her thing. And, and, uh, you mentioned sailing with Mike when they won the, the VX one North Americans, it's that kind of sail and it keeps you know, keeps her involved and excited. Yeah. 
it's it's pretty cool. You know, we travel quite a bit to to these different events, and it seems like everywhere we go, Joanne comes crawling out of the crowd to, to give everybody <laughs> hugs. So she's do, she's yeah. been doing a lot of sailing, and, and she's 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 got a lot of hardware on the wall. It seems like so. She's um, she's done really pretty well. Proud of her. Yeah. yeah, I'm very proud. Yeah. So. Well, great. Um, let's see what we can move on a little bit here. So, so let's just say, you know, the, one of these sailors that, that graduates and, and they're not going to make it to an Olympic team or they don't necessarily want to be a sailmaker. They're, they're going to go out and they're going to get a real job. But what seems to be happening is these, these kids disappear for about 10 years while they go out and they have their, they get married, they have their two and a half kids and and raise enough money to where they can come back and finally buy buy a little boat and, and start competing again. How do we bring those kids back into the fold or keep them in the fold a little bit longer? How you know? Well, you know, first I think, as you said, we all see it. They it's not that they don't want to do the sport. It's not that right. they don't love it. You know, and we met, we identified a few areas where they have the opportunity to continue to sail. And I, I got a feeling, or and I'm sure we've all seen it, that other classes are doing more of these youth sailing boat grant type opportunities. Yep. And I think that's cool and that's smart. Um, I, I think pro sailing um, is strong for a reason. And, um, and, and I think it's a great opportunity. You know, unfortunately, that's not for everybody, but I think it's great. But one thing, you know, we got to recognize the sports changed, you know, yeah. it's going to evolve. And um, one thing that we've noticed, you know, in my time at the College of Charleston is how we have this fleet of 10 J-22s. We have 36 dinghies that are sitting on the dock. And, and it was cool that our gang would say, how can we help the community? And when you make these boats available to the gang to be able to sail, for example, Tuesday night racing in the spring and the summer. Always a good time. <laughs> Man, well, sometimes there's 70 people out there. And I almost said yeah. kids, but it's kids. <laughs> it's it's the older generation. You know, it's yeah. it's um, it's everybody that gets to go out there and sail. And the J-22s are the same type of deal, whether it's our, our local Sarah championships or, you know, yacht club club championships or whatever it is. I think that is going to be an important part for yacht clubs or community sailing centers. And, and I'm not saying anything new for sure, because we see this happening right. to build these fleets, to be able to offer an easy way for people to get on the water, um, race or cruise. You know, obviously we're racers, so we look at it that way or cruise around or whatever it is. But I think when the boats are available, when it's relatively inexpensive, those kids will stay involved. You know, like you mentioned the Tuesday night that we just talked about. There are on any given night, you know, you could name probably six or eight recent graduates of not only the College of Charleston, but all kinds of colleges. You know, Ryan yeah. Davidson is a regular down there. Stefan Kuhn is a regular down there. Um, and I think that that's important because they have the opportunity to stay involved. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I think it's in, in my mind, Bill, just to kind of reiterate a yacht club or a community sailing program, you know, or a team, you know, it, it they can make a huge difference in a community if they just plain have boats available and make it easy for people to get out sailing without spending a pile of dough. Yeah, I think that's key. And, and I think a lot of clubs are kind of going to the, they're, they're digging into their pockets a little bit to buy a few boats and have the boats available and, and see what they can do to, to, bring these youth or junior memberships around so that, you know, they get it, get them there, get them sailing, keep them sailing. And once the, you know, once they've got a little money in their pockets, they'll invest in a boat and, and they'll keep sailing. So yeah, I, I think it's cool. And, and yeah, those Tuesday nights are always a good time. We don't get out there nearly enough, but I think now that Ashley works on that side of town, it might be a little easier for us to get over there and, and do those as soon as we start them up again. Hopefully it's sooner than later. That's so, great. That's great. Well, cool. Um, so, you know, what's, I, you know what, this is a good leader right here. Tommy, Tommy Weaver is a uh, flying Scott sailor out of Columbia, South Carolina. You know, Tommy, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. Hey, Tommy. He, he wants to know, are you going to go sailing? <laughs> well, I, um, 
Yeah, I'd love to do sailing. We still have our lightning. It's sitting in the garage. Um, obviously, Joanne is still engaged with the sport at all levels and loves it. And I think would, wouldn't mind getting in the boat with me again if there's time. Yeah. And, and we've threatened a crew from our brother and a lightning. And I would love to be able to have that opportunity. Um, and I love it. Um, but but I also recognize at these days, especially to be able to compete at a level that we all would like to compete at. And maybe what I was used to, you got to have the time to prepare and, you know, practice. And um, and I haven't been able to do that much recently. Um, so I would have to put that time in. And um, and that's that would be important to, you know, for me to be able to enjoy it the way I'd like. But that's a preface to me saying what I really love now is coaching. I yeah. just, it just turns me on when somebody, if you're in a motorboat and somebody turns around, looks at you and smiles and said, man, we're going faster or we're going higher. Or that really worked. And, um, it, and it doesn't matter what level you're at, whether it's a group of kids at Carolina Yacht Club say on open Bix, or whether it's Steph and Maggie and an FX at the Pan Am games, you know, yeah. It's all, it's relative, you know, and obviously we're looking at different levels and everything, but I, I think to me, being able to give back and, and, and have an impact like that is really fun. W whether it's an individual, I've been able to do some coaching with some J70s that involve some really close friends and, and Zeke's yeah. on the boat. So that's really cool. Yeah. And it's just to be able to spend that time with them and watch them learn and watch them enjoy it is really cool. So I, I think for me, um, I'm glad Joanne's continuing with the sport and I want her to do that. And, you know, if it would ever work where I'd end up coaching at the same events, that would be for me, the, the real deal. Yeah. Well, Tommy and, I would, and I would love to sail, but, but you are going to ask about the VX. So I will bring that up. <laughs> well, and I've been on, lucky. Let, let me come well, up here ahead. and, uh, your buddy Todd Wake. I'm going to let you talk about the VX1. I talk about the VX1 all the time. I can't get enough of it, but uh, but we'd like to hear your take on it. Well, you know, I, I've been lucky to sail a lot of classes and a lot of boats, and, uh, you know, I was born and raised in the Lightning, so we'll start with that. Um, and my good buddy, Jeff Iver, who sailed in with me for 30-some years, was president of the VX class for the last, uh, I don't know, a couple of years, and he always would bring his VX to Charleston Race Week, which yeah. obviously if you guys haven't been to that event, I really hope you get to do it. Unfortunately, it was canceled this year like everything, but it will be back. And it is a great yes. event. And, and and the VX is a growing class in that event. Um, and, um, and Jeff would bring the boat and Joanne and I would sail with him in that boat. And um, first I'll say I've never gone so fast in any sailboat <laughs> as I did the very first day we went out. So it's an exciting boat. Um, and I think it's a different perspective. You know, I, I certainly it, it's um, a different kind of boat from the Lightning, but I think they complement one another. And I, I guess that's why I bring it up because, you know, I love the Lightning and, and I have one sitting in the garage and we would never give it up. But I also think the VX is a really cool boat because it brings something to the table for people that want to just plain go really fast. And it's a, you know, it's a great group of people in that class as well. And I think um, this is what we need to engage the young people we're talking about too, is to have boats at all levels. You know, it, it's cool. And I know you've seen it too, Bill, the lightning class is just amazing with the number of young sailors that are like at the North Americans or at our, our big regatta here in the fall, the, wild oyster, you know, it's just drawing amazing. I, I think there were 30 some kids at the, at the um, wild oyster under 30 years old, which is cool in this lightning regatta. And then of course the VX is going to draw to people um, that want to just plain rip around and go real fast. So, you know, there's, there are opportunities out there, but I think people like you and I, and I think a lot of people that are hopefully listening to this, we have to really work hard to make sure they have the opportunities to, to sail all these boats and enjoy it. You know, absolutely. And there's absolutely. a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah. It, it sounds like uh, Todd wants you to go, go uh, 
to the Lightning Masters this year. That's a deal. That's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, Jeff Betts has a quick question here. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, Ooh. he has. Yeah. If I'm going to write any more books. Um, well, it's funny that Jeff mentions that. Uh, obviously, we all have a little more time on our hands these days. <laughs> and, um, and I have a website that I'm working on. Um, actually, a good friend of mine from the college. Um, Stefan Kuhn's working on it. What's, and what's that on? Uh, just gregfishersailing.com. Maybe give it a day. <laughs> it's not quite there yet, but I'll give it a day. But what I'm hoping to do is kind of do some blogging, maybe do some interviews, maybe write some articles and put it there. And, um, you know, um, it was fun doing the book that we did a number of years ago with my doctor and uh, former president of U.S. Sailing, Tom Hubble. Um, I I'm not sure I'd do that again, but I would certainly would love to write because I like that. And, and um, if we can do more things like this um, where we can help teach people, that'd be really cool. Absolutely. I think, yeah, it's funny. I, I don't always get a lot of time to sit down and read, but I've, I, I do my best to, you know, when, when, when somebody like yourself puts a book out there, I'll, I'll sit down and read it because you, all the little nuances that you can't quite pick up on the water, you can, you pick up in the book and, and it's just a matter of now it's just applying it back. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, I think mm -hmm. we're, we'd all be pretty happy, you know, if you, if you could get another book out there for <laughs> us, but uh, well, thanks. That's so fun. let's see what, I'm not sure if anybody else has got any, we, Tim Pitt says uh, hi from uh, ISV 28, the VX one fleet. Oh yeah. Um, so that's cool. Looks like he got dropped off here. Um, your buddy Ryan Flack from the Lightning Free Fleet. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need to get Ryan back out sailing once in a while. I think he still sails up in the Michigan. Yeah. But, uh, we need that's to get a him. super active fleet up there at Pontiac. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely. think that's probably the biggest fleet of sailboats probably anywhere in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. It's a good group. There's your buddy Ryan Davidson. You just oh, mentioned yeah. him. Yep. He's yeah. a boat grant recipient, right? Yeah. And so that's just to. You know, I don't necessarily mean to put a plug in for the lightning class, but, but I will because I think they do a great job. You know, they do the boat grant program and, and then they actually take it to the next step where they have a legacy program, they call it, where they actually um, will have boats donated to the program. Or now that there's a little bit of funding for it, they'll actually this year we're buying a new boat to provide to um, the boat grant program to kind of keep it at a level where, when, when the sailors get in, they're truly competitive. All the boats so how, have new sails. It's really cool. How many boats are in that boat grant fleet now? So this year, it's about to be announced. There are three teams, a, an okay. all-women's team, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and what's really cool, too, is they're almost all college sailors. So that goes back to what we're saying. Yeah. But, but Ryan's the epitome of how that program works because you do the boat grant, you love it. You say, this is cool. What's the next step? Like you asked earlier, Bill. And then the lightning has this legacy deal where they'll say, hey, how about you buy this boat and we'll make you a deal that you can't refuse. And sure enough, Ryan bought the boat. It's wow. parked on the other side of our driveway out here. <laughs> and he went to the North Americans, got seventh best of boat grant um, sailor I think has ever done. Although a lot of them have done very well. Yeah. And, um, and he got second in the South Americans and he's, he's full on in the lightning class and, and represents what, what this kind of a program and what a class like that, that's working at it can really make happen. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, we, we, we enjoy Ryan a lot. We get to see him a lot sailing and I think Jordan sailed with him a, a few times now in the, in the lightning and, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's a great guy. So, Anything else you want to add? Looks like we we've definitely gone above our thirty minute bubble, but I think it's been Sorry great. I think we yeah. no don't don't apologize at all because I think I think it's we've had a lot of a lot of viewers come in and 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 a little bit of interaction, so it's been good. So anything well, you want to add? Yeah, you ask. You know, one of the things when when you and I traded ideas on what the agenda might be like at the end, you said, you know, if there's something you want to say to the group, whether it's younger sailors or whatever what would you suggest? And, um, and, and, and I, I, I want to try to say this in a way that it, it, it really resonates, but when you're looking at life, you know, 
make sure that you involve your family in this sport, you know, and, and uh, for me, I'm really lucky that Joanne loves the sport, you know, maybe even more than I do, you know, and she <laughs> has a great time doing it. And when we met, um, my enthusiasm for it, you know, just grew that much more. And the fact that we're able to do this together has been really important to me. And, um, awesome. and I'm really lucky as a result. And as a result, you know, um, my kids are involved. My oldest daughter, Martha, just did the Thistle Midwinters West um, this winter. She's still into it. Um, Joanne's and my daughter, Addison, we're hoping, we're very careful not to push her. Yep. But she's gotten into high school sailing. And I'm just saying, you know, I think what's cool about this sport is it truly can be a family sport. And, um, and to make it really a lifelong sport, we, we all need to work hard to involve our families and it just makes it that much more fun. So yeah. that's, that's my two cents. And I, and I couldn't be more um, lucky and, and grateful for what this sport has brought to me and my family. It's a, uh, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, I think we'll probably go ahead and sign off here. It looks like we've gotten a lot of thanks on here. So um, it sounds like we did some good today, Greg. <laughs> well, I, no, this yeah, is really yeah. cool that you're doing this. I love the fact that you make it so informal and fun, and it's neat to see people ask questions or make comments. I, I hope you keep doing this. And, and I hope I we will. what I think is cool is that I hope even after we get through these tough times, you know, with the virus and what we're all dealing with and forced into, that you keep this going because I, you know, it's cool. It's 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 just plain fun. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's a good time. And, and hopefully we can keep things like this going even. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to try and do these interviews, you know, over the next, you know, however long we're stuck here at the house, right? Because it's, it's, you know, we're, we're not there working on sales right now. So, you know, so we might as well do it. And if, if you're watching and, and want to chime in and be brought into one of the conversations, then, you know, just send me a little, little link and you know, you know how to get into it now. You just you say, say something in the, uh, in the post and I'll send you the link and you can pop in and, and crash the party. Like maybe we can get Jeff Iber on next week talking about VX once and you can crash his party for him. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some passion for sure. <laughs> no doubt. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, and you mentioned the you know this this whole thing with the virus going on and and, the, and that we're we're stuck inside right now and and and, and these are definitely tough times. But we want to make sure that everybody is is safe and healthy and 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 ready to go back as soon as as soon as the you know this thing disappears. We want to be back on the water as soon as possible, and and that's that's what we all really are, are looking for. So. Um, we, you know, we look forward to it and hopefully we can, you know, show up at some of these regattas, you know, in June or July and, and not laugh about it, but, you know, kind of reflect on, you know, telling stories of what we did to pass our time during all this stuff. And, you know, I, I think that the biggest question right now is, is Greg actually wearing pants right now as he just got the college shirt on? <laughs> But, it uh, is, it's Friday. So yes, I am on Friday. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. And, um, and we'll talk to you soon. And we'll see you on the water. Great, Bill. Thanks. All thanks right. for doing this. And, and, um, and I'm honored that you asked me to be a part of it. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for, thanks for, uh, working through the technical difficulties and, and getting on and, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. Thanks. thanks Bill. Take care. Bye-bye.